Hey everybody, I just finished watching John Bolton's interview with ABC's Martha Raddatz and Bolton said that in presenting the set of circumstances that occurred leading up to his ouster from the White House, that he told President Trump that he was going to resign the day before he intended to do it and had his assistant draft a letter that was to be delivered to President Trump and put on his desk, where Bolton himself intended to, for all practical purposes, uh, not be in the vicinity of the White House when it arrived. But what happened was that Trump did something that another president wouldn't do. He turned it around on him and said, hey, look, by a tweet, essentially, I'm firing John Bolton. When Bolton went to Twitter to correct Trump and say, no, 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 he didn't fire me, I resigned, John Bolton told Martha Raddatz that his Twitter account was, quote, turned off, unquote. His words, turned off. Martha Raddatz didn't pick up on that. She didn't ask how that happened. She just simply said, turned off, and he said, turned off. And they went on to talk about other related subjects. But I stopped right there because that happened on the 24th, excuse me, on the 10th of September of 2019, last year. Now, during June, I believe June 14th of 2019, Twitter chief executive officer, and a number of his key staff members visited President Trump at the White House. And while they gave a very broad brushed explanation of what the discussions were, i.e. they were cordial, talked about how to better work together, words to that effect, no details were provided. Then something really funny started to happen. Around September, Twitter began to change a number of different policies. They began to lop off different Twitter accounts, ostensibly for violation of Twitter rules that didn't exist before. Like, for example, platform manipulation, a policy that was created on the 19th of September. But I digress. K. Matadi, who was Twitter's head of global content, resigned on the 24th of November 2019. I had the pleasure of meeting Kay at the Consumer Electronics Show earlier that year, that 2019, and we did stay in touch. But I found it quite mysterious that Kay left the way that he did, without an explanation, just platitude and comments pointing to great cordial relations and the assembly of a smooth transition. That was it. He did say he didn't know what he was going to do next, a comment that was quite puzzling. It left me to wonder what happened. But it left me to wonder what happened more when just days before the Consumer Electronics Show for 2020 and just about a few hours after Ivanka Trump's father, President Trump, announced a far more warlike stance with Iran, one that I interpreted and others did as World War III, that we're going to war against Iran, I made a video blog expressing my concern that Ivanka Trump was coming to CES to give a keynote when her father was essentially putting much of the international tech world in danger, essentially, because of his actions with respect to Iran, so close to CES. Now, I have stated before, and I will say again, especially, especially after having attended Ms. Trump's keynote, I have nothing against, and I had nothing against, 
Ivanka Trump herself being at CS to deliver a keynote. And I have said, and I will say again, that she, and I quote, killed it, unquote. She did a fantastic job. And I said then, and I'll say again, I think would make an amazing presidential candidate someday. And I mean that. My criticism had to do with the circumstance. But that wasn't enough for a number of Trump trolls. And it wasn't enough for Twitter, which suspended my account in just approximately two hours after I released the tweet that was associated with the video blog and the blog post that, I, that was created automatically through the system I developed. And it took Twitter a full two weeks to get back to me to explain what the reason was, unlike their press platitudes that they send to you emails and messages explaining exactly what tweet it was, right, that led to the ouster. With me, it wasn't hard to figure out exactly which one it was, but the fact that they took so long to do it, and when they did, said that it had to do with platform manipulation, I had multiple accounts, rang hollow. Why? Because if you go to Google right now, right this moment, and type Twitter multiple accounts in Google search, the number one result will be a help page on the Twitter website which shows you how to maintain multiple accounts, more than one on Twitter. So why would Twitter suspend my account for something they allow everybody in the Twitter universe to do? Or the Twitterverse, if you like. Hmm? And I'm not the only person this has happened to. So I now look back at these events. Jack Dorsey meeting with President Trump in June of 2019. The action of basically freezing or stopping John Bolton's access to his own account or suspending his own account after President Trump fired him and then when Trump when Bolton delivered back that he resigned and the president was wrong his account was he put turned off suspended and then of course came Atati's resignation as the head of global content for Twitter on the 10th of November excuse me the 24th of November of 2019 why do I point to K it's not because I met him no but it did make it easier to figure out the trail because no action like that on that high level would occur without the blessing of the head of global content. That would be K at the time. That was September, two months before he resigned. So it's obvious to me, at least, that K felt he was being asked to do something that was against his principles and could no longer work with Twitter or for Twitter. And regardless of where he was going to go next, decided that escaping was the best action. But for any head of state, for anybody in any position of prominence on Twitter, or I should say has, who has an account on Twitter, that example and that encounter should give you pause. And you should ask Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, exactly what was going on. This whole recent business of tagging tweets by the president now to me rings hollow in terms of any uh, absolute uh, example that Twitter is not in some type of uh, partnership with the president of the United States to essentially control messages that are sent. Sure, the president can go and overstep his bounds from here time to time. Twitter can step in and look like it's correcting him. And so this cover story exists. A cover story that shields our view from the real one. Just what is going on? Oh, and by the way, Jack, please restore my Twitter account to unsuspended status. Thank you.
and subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube and bookmark oaklandnewsnow.com.